What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and on today's video we are looking at Mizuno's newly redesigned Wave Rebellion Flash. And the Wave Rebellion Flash is basically an update of Mizuno's Wave Rebellion, except it is much better. And it's much better in a lot of ways, which we'll get into over the video, but first up is price. And you can buy the Wave Rebellion Flash from Roadrunner Sports for $160. Of course I will place a link in the show notes below in case you want to pick up a pair. And in case you don't remember, when the Wave Rebellion was released that was $180. But that is in the past, we are now focused on the Rebellion Flash, and I'll just come right out there and tell you that $160 is a very good price for this shoe. Mizuno was also able to shave off quite a bit of weight from the Rebellion to get the Flash. And now a US men's size 9 tips the scale at 8.1 ounces or 229 grams and that's about 20 grams less than the Wave Rebellion. And in my size a US men's size 13 my pair tips the scale at 10.5 ounces or 299 grams. So for me this feels very light on my foot. The Wave Rebellion Flash still features an 8 millimeter drop however the stack height are very difficult to come by but when I hold this up to the Wave Rebellion the stack heights look almost identical. So because of that I'm going to say that the Wave Rebellion Flash has 36 in the heel and 28 millimeters in the forefoot giving it that 8 millimeter drop. So as of the making of this video I have put over 50 miles in this shoe and I did race a half marathon in them so I got a lot of practice at running fast which is where this shoe excels. But before we talk about how this shoe rides let's talk about the fit let's talk about the materials and as usual we will start at the top we'll work our way down. Let's take a look at this heel collar and it's actually quite thin. It's quite a bit thinner than the previous Wave Rebellion, which makes sense because it lost so much weight over the Rebellion. However, removing this little bit of padding around the heel collar didn't contribute to any less comfort. One of the biggest changes between the Wave Rebellion and the Wave Rebellion Flash is that the Rebellion Flash feels a lot more like a fast race day shoe. And one of the reasons for that is in the heel counter. On the Wave Rebellion Flash, Mizuno has got away from the rigid heel counter and it's a lot more race inspired. It is very soft. I can squeeze the heel quite easily and bend it down and that is generally what we see in faster shoes. On daily trainers we see a lot more rigid heel counter and on the faster shoes it's a lot more loose. But even so the heel counter isn't as rigid as we might see on some let's just say slower shoes. I didn't experience any heel slip, I did get a lovely lockdown. The upper is a breathable air mesh and that pretty much describes it to a T. It is extremely breathable. As far as the overlays go we have a very minimal amount of overlays. Now the main design are these horizontal lines which helps give the shoe a sense of speed and the horizontal lines and the Mizuno logo are all sublimated and we do have this very thin overlay right on the lateral side and then a matching one on the medial side and then on the rear right in the center we do have a little piece of faux leather. The outlet chain has been reinforced with a very thin overlay of course that's needed just to give the outlet chain a little bit of structure and for the same reason we have these overlays just back from the midpoint of the shoe towards the heel just gives this area of the shoe a little bit of structure. One thing that you can't see on camera but you might be wondering about because we do see that the upper is a little rigid I mean it is standing up it's not just flopping down is that there is an internal Internal strap and this internal strap is to give it a secure fit and hold when you're running fast. Now it's not a very big strap it runs from here coming down this side and it looks to be about two centimeters wide and then if we turn it around on the lateral side the strap is just a little bit thicker perhaps three centimeters wide and it runs pretty much in the same direction. The laces I've got no complaints about the laces well you know what I do the laces in themselves are fine they tie the shoes they lock my foot down and they feel good. My only complaint with the laces is that Look at this. They are just so crazy long. And I had the same complaint with the Wave Rebellion. So clearly Mizuno is not looking at my videos and making changes. But this is just insane. And I find that I have to triple knot my shoe in order to take up enough of the laces so they're not flopping and touching the ground. And even when I do that, they're still flopping around a lot. Now look, ultimately it doesn't really make that big a difference. I'm able to triple knot them. The shoes are still comfortable, but I mean, look at this. This is crazy. I don't know if I've seen laces this long in any other shoe ever. That's actually my one complaint with a shoe, so I had to make a big deal of it. Coming down to the midsole, Mizuno is using two midsole foams. On this colorway, it's very easy to see the difference in the foams. We have the orange and the white. The orange foam on the forefoot coming up to the heel is Mizuno's Energy Light. And the Mizuno Energy Light is 22% lighter than Euphoric and 35% more responsive. Then we come down on the heel and we have the Mizuno's Energy Foam. But this is the light, this is plain energy. The Energy Foam is 17% lighter than Euphoric and 50 15% more responsive. And after hearing the big numbers of the Energy Light, you might be thinking, well, that's a shame. Why didn't they put more responsive foam here? And the answer is simple. This is a shoe made for faster days. And when you run faster, you run more up on your forefoot. So we don't need as much energy return in the heel portion. And the Mizuno Energy Foam is just going to give it a little more structure. It's a little denser. Oh, while we're talking about the upper, Mizuno is using 90% recycled materials on the upper and the sock liner. So that's always good. I like to hear these numbers of using recycled materials. But really, Mizuno has been in the game of using recycled materials for a 
long time, especially since the Wave Neo collection, the Wave Neo Wind and the Wave Neo Ultra. I have reviews of those shoes if you want to go back and check them out. Now it's time to talk about the Wave Play, and if you have run in any Mizuno shoes, you are probably familiar with the Wave Play. And it's visible on the outside lateral edge and on the medial side, and it runs from about the heel to about where you can see it here, and then it forks slightly into the front of the shoe. Now, I do have to say, this is not like a regular plated shoe. The plate does not come down to the toes. It doesn't have the responsiveness of a carbon fiber plate. Now this Wave Plate is plant-based. It's a glass fiber reinforced plate. It has higher rigidity and is 1,141% more snappier than PBAX plates. So it's not nothing. It does contribute to a very fast feeling ride. And we're getting to the ride. I'm gonna talk about the ride in just a second, but let's just talk about the outsole. Mizuno is using the G3 outsole just like they did on the first Rebellion. However, on the Rave Rebellion Flash, they're using a softer grade PU resin. And this is probably another one of my favorite big changes of the Wave Rebellion Flash. Because although the Wave Rebellion Flash still feels somewhat of a firm ride, it's not nearly as firm as the first Wave Rebellion. In fact, it's not firm enough to put me off even in the beginning of my run. In fact, I would say that Mizuno has dialed in the firmness to give the shoe a better sense of speed rather than just being firm for firmness sake. Okay, let's get into ride for just a second. Now I have run just over 50 miles in this shoe. And as I already said, I did race a half marathon, but I've also done intervals, I've done tempo runs, and I've done easy runs. And while this shoe definitely excels at speed, I think this is a good race day shoe. I didn't really notice anything detrimental to just going out and doing a run with it. So I think the longest run that I did at just my regular easy pace was about eight miles in this shoe. But I also did several miles warm up before I did intervals. And then of course my cool downs after my runs. So I've run a good cross section of all paces in this shoe. And ultimately it is very comfortable and it feels fast. This shoe basically disappears on my feet. What I did notice though, when I was racing, was that this shoe has a feeling that reminded me of race shoes back before we had carbon fiber plated shoes to race in. It just feels light. It feels a part of my foot. This may sound a bit excessive, but to me, it was refreshing to run in. I'm not always the biggest fan of running in carbon plated shoes. I mean, they're absolutely fine for race day. The performance speaks for itself, but I do find that I get a little bit of plate fatigue. And with this, even though it does have the wave plate, I don't experience any plate fatigue. So while this is definitely not a daily trainer, probably not a shoe that you're going to want to take out on your everyday runs, it certainly can be used for that, at least in the warm or if you just want to run in these shoes for some reason and you want to go out easy. But I think the Wave Rebellion Flash is a good option if you want to run fast, if you want to race. And I think it's actually going to turn out to be a pretty versatile shoe. I think for the person that likes a slightly firmer ride, I'm going to put this on the same plane as the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3. Of course, the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3 is a lot softer of a ride, but the performance and the feel of the shoe feels very similar to me. So a lot of times I like to say, don't buy the shoes as soon as they come out. Wait for them to go down in price a little bit, maybe even buy last year's model. The Wave Rebellion Flash is such an enormous update with such huge benefits that this is the shoe that you need to buy. Don't bother with the old Wave Rebellion. This is a pretty solid shoe and I'm really happy I chose it for my race day shoe. Oh, and as it turns out, I actually won the half marathon that I raced in the Wave Rebellion Flash. So I don't know if there's anyone out there keeping a spreadsheet on the first wins in any given shoe, but I bet I'm the first person to win a race in the Wave Rebellion Flash. And now that I think about what I just said, I realize that means absolutely nothing, but it is what it is. And if you have made it this far in the video, first of all, thank you. Second of all, why don't you drop that explosion emoji in the comments so I know who has stayed all the way to the end because boom, this is a solid shoe. I'm Matt B. This has been my review of Mizuno's Wave Rebellion Flash. Be kind, be happy, run well. I'll see you in a couple of days.